do cheap microscopes actually work? Well, hey, look at this. I have a bunch of cheap microscopes in front of me. I have a little smartphone microscope. This comes in at about $20. A USB microscope. This one's a little over $20. I have this kid's compound microscope, which was slightly under $20. And then I have this upgraded compound microscope, which is about $50 to $60. First up, we have this smartphone microscope. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love these things. They're, they're just super handy, super convenient. Um, throw it over, over the camera lens here. And now I'm putting it on one of our Micro Safari Terra slides. Okay, so it looks like we see a little mite, mite right there, kind of running around. This guy, and those mites are super small, by the way. There's a big guy running around. I figured that I should show a $20 bill as well. I really like these as a sample. You can see the sparkliness of the ink on the 20 of the $20 bill. Just for reference, here's what my fingerprint looks like under it also. If you look closely, you can actually see like the sweat pores in my fingerprint. Pretty, pretty neat. But the reason why I think these things work really well is if you have a good smartphone, it's taking advantage of the camera inside of your smartphone, and that's why these things really, really rock and roll. Next up, we have this USB microscope. We'll take a look at my fingerprint right now. I'm just putting it in front of the camera lens. The thing I don't totally love about this one is it's a little bit hard to get objects focused. But once you get them focused, it's actually pretty good. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with this one. I've used these type of USB microscopes in the past, and they just don't work all that well. But this one, like particularly the problem I've come to is that when you're looking at a recording video, they're always, they always were like 14 FPS. So the image is definitely not 1080p or 4K or anything like that. Now we have the, the $20 bill. Here's that sparkly 20 of the $20 bill. And again, I, I have this just pressed all the way up against the edge. I like that you can see the little security features. Those little colored strands are little fibers that they embed into the dollar bill so people don't counterfeit them. Here's the eye again. Um, I, you know, so this, these work pretty well as long as you're holding the object all the way up against the edge. But if you, for example, have to have your object away from it and it's on the stand, pretty easy to keep things in focus, actually. I was going to say it's a little bit hard if you're, like, not holding the stand down. You know, I shake the table over here and the whole thing will move. Um, but this stand, again, I've used some, I'm, like, barely touching the edge of it here. Um, these stands that I've used in the past have just never worked for me, but this particular model that I have in my hand right now, I guess actually does work pretty well. I don't know what that waviness is about. That's kind of interesting though. What, what is that? What's going on? Yeah, who knows? Um, and then let's throw up the Micro Safari Terra cartridge here. By the way, this is our new and experimental fill it yourself version. So I'm excited to start talking about that more in the future once we have that fully up and developed. So this is from the local park. Let's see if we can find some springtails here. There we are. So yeah, they look pretty cool. And again, I have this all the way pressed up against it. Now, I'm probably going to scratch the acrylic by moving this on here. It seems like I, I can hear the scratching, so I don't love that. Here's a nice little fiber or something. It does seem like the, the image is fairly overexposed. I think I can adjust that on my camera settings. Here's a little mite guy. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in Micro Safari Terra, check out the Micro Safari Terra product page. Uh, but yeah, overall verdict, hey, not, not actually all that bad. I'm I'm pretty happy with this thing. I was I was expecting to give it a worse review, but not it's not bad. I you know what can I say? I don't mind this. I don't mind it. Next up we have this super cheap compound microscope for kids. This is easily gonna be the hardest one for me to show you what it looks like under it, because I'm gonna have to like precariously put my phone up here. This none of this is standard size, so I can't use any of my actual microscope cameras to plug into this thing. And because I think this is really where the pitfall of this kind of a microscope comes in is that they're trying to give you these super high magnification abilities. You know, this thing goes up to 1200 times magnification, which is just absurd for doing something that's plastic and trying to go up to 1200 times magnification. And in fact, this microscope has the same sin here. They say you can go to a thousand times magnification, which is like clearly not true. If you've ever seen something at a thousand times magnification, you'll know for sure that these are not a thousand times magnification. Um, so I can't really put my finger under it. I can't put the Micro Safari Terra. I can't really even do the dollar, the $20 bill because this is transmitted light only. So I'm gonna probably just use this little sample, prepared sample slide. Ah oh, man, for the sake of the video, you get to see me kind of struggle to get an image with this thing too. They also do this weird thing where it like pivots like this and that's really not useful. In fact, it kind of makes it a lot harder. 
All right, that's about as close as I'm gonna be able to get it. And now, very precariously, take my phone and bring it very slowly onto here. Uh, all right, now we can see just kind of blurry mess. Great, now move the thing up and down. You can kind of see the images. And by the way, this is, this is what it looks like under, with my own eyes too. This isn't, okay, there we go, boom. Boom, we saw some individual cells, you see that? Boom, cells. We did it, look at that. Uh, and also that was at uh, only 100 times magnification, they claim, which is total nonsense, by the way. That's this, that was probably like a 50 times magnification image. Um, but yeah, I, this one I definitely can't recommend. If you're gonna need, get a compound microscope, you're gonna wanna shell out more money than $20. Like, spend, spend your $20 on getting one of these or one of these. If you want a compound microscope, you gotta upgrade to one of these. This is our MS205T microscopes. This comes in at about the $150 mark. And this is really the minimum that I would recommend spending on a compound biological microscope. Because if I bring this other one back in, this was the one I mentioned was $50. I can't recommend this one either because it runs into the exact same problems that this one has. Namely, that it's an all plastic construction, which means that this whole thing can flex and it will just go out of focus. And really, once you get to these higher magnifications, you have to have a rigid frame of the thing. So this, this one is now an all metal construction on here and the, you know, it can go up to, uh, let's see here, 40 times this eyepiece is <laughs> a 10 times. So it can go an actual to actually 400 times magnification. You know, it's 1200 times on this one, complete absurdity. Um, even like this is kind of a high magnification for, for this setup. Um, so I'm gonna show you what this one looks like using this little USB microscope eyepiece camera that slots in just like that. And this also, I believe, comes in at about the $40 mark. Um, so if you're gonna get a microscope camera, um, you know, it's, I wish I could give you more solid advice on like, oh, a $40 one will work great. But what I've come to find with microscope cameras, especially recently, I mean, we've been doing a lot of purchasing, testing of different suppliers, microscope equipment. And if you go and buy one on Amazon, I've had one that was $80 and worked significantly worse than one that was $40. And I think it just comes down to how modern the circuitry inside this thing is, the, the image sensor and the, the actual like chips that allow it to transmit the video signal out because that's really the limiting factor is how much kind of bandwidth you can push down this USB cable. All right, I have it all set up now and I wanted to use the same sample slide so that you can see the comparison here. This is at the lowest magnification that this thing can do. So that would be a four times objective times, um, well, it gets complicated because there's no eyepiece in there, but I mean, you can just see that the difference in image quality here is pretty substantial. And, you know, I'm gonna hold this down and try and flex the the stage and you can see it does move a little bit but it doesn't actually go out of focus um, and that's I mean that's really the important thing here is the metal of the frame makes it so you can actually see at these high magnifications so now I'm gonna move up to this higher magnification here and the focus is also becomes ever more increasingly important as you go up in magnification I mean yeah it looks great I mean no no complaints here let's go to the highest magnification so this is again 400 times and you can see how much more magnified this is it gets complicated because of the way that camera will, cameras work and whatnot. Um, you'll see it's starting to, you know, with these high magnifications, they don't look superb, um, but that doesn't, it's actually not because of the microscope, it's because of the way that the sample prep and the illumination is being done on, on the sample, but I, I digress. Um, so now let's put it into the reflected light mode. Go back to that 20 here. So this is now just way more magnified than those digital microscopes could do. I mean, you can even see the three dimensionality of the ink. And again, this is the lowest lowest magnification objective. I don't actually even know that we're gonna be able to, oh no, we can go higher. You can kind of see, there you go. You can see the little individual, oh, it's actually like glitter. That's kind of interesting. They're little gl like glitter flakes. Huh, neat. I've never seen that before. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then let's do tear it around things off. Move it down a lot. Now, let's see here. Here's a little 
isopod, who looks like this one might be dead, in fact, but there you go. You can see the isopod's leg. Again, people, people think they need a super high magnification. It turns out that higher magnifications are, like, harder to deal with. It's, like, a little harder to track these things. I mean, I really do like the smartphone microscope's level of magnification, and actually, even this little USB microscope's level of magnifi magnification for, for microsafari. There we go, we found him. So this is a little, you can see the skin of the microscopic centipede here. Pretty cool. So, you know, even this magnification, the lowest magnification on this compound microscope, is almost too much. And because I'm guessing you want to see how this kind of $50, $60 microscope works, I'm going to show you that too. Thankfully, it is the same eyepiece tube size, so I can take a look at that. And now, let's see if I can hold this down. And now let me just touch the microscope stage itself. You can see it kind of going in and out of focus. And I'm just going to kind of touch the other side of the table here. I mean, you can see it actually even moving the sample. I'm barely touching the table over there. <laughs> and you can see the whole thing moving around. Um, but it, it definitely still works. I mean, the image quality is not quite as good. Um, and of course, this problem is going to get worse and worse the higher the magnification we go. Well, here are my final thoughts and opinions. Smartphone microscope. I like them, they're classic. You do need a smartphone to be able to use them. Uh, this USB microscope, pleasantly surprised about. Here's the problem with this though. This is the USB microscope that I got a couple years ago. These look basically identical. They were the same price, but this one performs significantly better. This one was almost unusable. And so, and again, this is, this is the issue. If you're, if you're going on Amazon and just buying random microscopes, like you don't really know the quality. I mean, you can look at the reviews and whatnot, but there's so many different suppliers that make microscopes that look almost exactly the same. They're almost the exact same price point. And I really what I think distinguishes these two from each other are that this one has a newer processor and a newer image sensor in it, which makes the whole thing work insanely better. And not to kind of toot our own horn here too much, but that's really the service that we're providing at Micro Safari is that we source microscopes from all these suppliers and then we test them all out and we figure out which ones are actually the good ones at their price point and then those are the ones that we choose to carry. So we're not currently carrying this one because I thought it was actually exactly the same as this one um, but now that I'm testing it out this one actually is different um, and I'm going to see about maybe carrying this one on our website. Um, moving on we have you know I wouldn't I just don't recommend getting a compound microscope until at least the $60 price point. I would say the $120 price point, $150 price point is even better. And then if you can, if you can afford it, I think the $250 price point is really where compound microscopes start shining. Let me go grab one of those. This is a compound microscope that you would get at about the $250 price point. And what makes this thing work so much better is that it has a mechanical stage on it the up and down Z axis is, is more precise. It has a condenser on it, and then you also get another objective. The binocular part is definitely nice, um, but I would say that, I don't know, this is maybe just my personal opinion, I much prefer using microscopes with a microscope camera on them instead. But if you really wanna look at it with both your eyes, you just love getting eye strain, um, a binocular definitely is an improvement over a monocular scope. So $250 price point. And then from beyond there, I mean, you can keep adding features. I would say that after the $250 price point, you start to get diminishing returns as far as um, money put in versus value you get out of the microscope. So yeah, hope this video was helpful. If you'd like to check us out, you can visit microsafari.org, see our offerings, and thank you for watching. See you next time.